Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another episode of A Dairyman's Diary. My name is Will, and you join me here back on Gwen Thor as we are racing out in the Massey. Uh, we have nothing on the back. Going over to Dad's to pick up his uh, trailer. Uh, this the cattle shed has been in need of a good clean out for a while now. Uh, we haven't haven't really got round to it, but uh, we haven't got many other jobs to do today this afternoon. So we're going to just get cracking with it and see how we get on. Uh, so yeah, we are going to pick up the trailer, come back, clean that out. I think we're going to have to come lead the uh, muck back down this way. Um, we recently drilled like a small paddock with uh, cover crop, with a mixture of oil radishes amongst other things. A bit of vetch in there as well, a bit of clover, a bit of wild oat. Um, so what we might do is just tip it straight onto there, and then we can we can leave it there for the future. So that's what we're going to get cracking with this afternoon, just for an hour or two, keep us going there. Uh, the field we drilled is actually in there, it's just starting to come through I think, so it's, uh, that's good news at least. But yeah, we just need to get this shed cleaned out now, uh, just so we don't have to worry about it later on when we're trying to get ahead with the drilling. That still hasn't taken the drill off the Ford there, let's see. Not to worry, uh, we'll head up here though and we'll just grab this trailer. Now I could use the silage trailers, lots of people do uh, just in fact use the silage trailers, but uh, I just prefer to use uh, use this one. It's a little bit lower. It's quicker to fill uh, because you don't have to lift quite as high. And it's, with that in mind, it's probably a little bit safer to fill it up here as well because the JCB doesn't have to lift as high, like I say. And then when the load's in there, it's not typically there's a tendency to want to overfill that this, the silage trailers because it's, you can put more into them, uh, which does shift around the weight a little bit. In there, so it can be a little bit uh, nerve wracking. So yeah, we have a small trailer for a reason. We'll use it for this, and then we'll get it all, um, we'll get it steam cleaned out again before harvest, so it's good to use with the uh, carton grain. But we should be all good. It's due to rain, I think, this afternoon, this evening. Certainly looking that way. The clouds are coming in looking very ominous, I must say. Uh, if it does arrive, then, you know, we'll make the most of it. Uh, we do need a bit of rain around here now, in current uh, status, I would say. But uh, yeah, if, it if the rain comes down, so be it, we'll survive. Uh, really, I'm sure we can. Okay, up the hill there. there we go. Yeah, other than that, we're kind of, as I was touching on yesterday, uh, or in yesterday's video there, we're kind of in a little bit of a, a lull right now, just waiting for, waiting for grass to grow, waiting for this uh, cereal crops to, um, to desiccate, so we can actually get in there with the harvester. Uh, we might come back once we, when we come and drop off the trailer there, we might just come and see what that combine's looking like. Bring it out of the shed, see how it's, uh, see how it's holding up there, really. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to need that sooner rather than later. I think we're going to need it up at, um, the, uh, up at our yard first. Uh, that's the way the crops are looking at the moment. We'll see how it progresses over the next week or so. But, yeah, there's a few crops that need, look, the wheat's a little bit further behind at the moment. But other than that, yeah, we just need a lot of rain for the grass. Uh, we need to find a right balance of a good good amount of rain for the grass, but uh, very little rain for the for the spring crops. So we'll figure that one out, and we'll find a way to get it all done. We always do. It always gets a little busy. Well, we are back in here now. We just refilled the water troughs there early. We need to give the cattle another clean out properly. Uh, but what we'll do we'll swing us around here and then we'll kind of angle ourselves back in towards the JCB a bit that should do the trick Excellent, so we'll get this filled up here. Shouldn't take too long. We're going to be in the very noisy telehandler, so I do apologize for the noise that's about to come. Uh, gotta get her rumbling away. So we do keep straw down in here for the cattle. They typically don't tend to use it too much through the summer because, well, the they're out and about in the fields, but uh, we keep the doors open so they can come in if it gets too wet. Typically with our British summers there, there's always a chance of a big shower, so we like to uh, give them that option when that does inevitably arrive. Get 
get some lights in here, see if we can see what we're doing properly. There we go. So I hope you're all doing very well. I hope this finds you in good health. Uh, whatever you're getting up to, and I hope everything you're managing to get everything done as you would like to. Uh, I know there's a lot of people now are uh, finishing up the harvest, getting the uh, drilling done, perhaps even getting back into school as well, which is uh, always exciting. Do, as always, do let me know where you're watching from, particularly if you are a new user first or a new subscriber. First of all, welcome along on behalf of Simulation for the Nation. I hope you're doing very well. Thank you for subscribing and checking out my vlog on his channel. We really do appreciate that, the pair of us. It's always nice to have you on board. And like I say, it's always very interesting to kind of figure out and understand where the audience are watching from. We are always quite humbled and blown away by that. Excellent. So I'll probably put another couple of loads into there. That should just about do us, I would imagine. Good enough to get us out of here and up the road. Some of the dryer straw I don't mind particularly leaving here. Just want to get some of this wet muck out of here. It's been sitting here for quite a while as we got rid of all the, or focused on the first cut really, got that all out of the way. Uh, so yeah, we, it doesn't hurt to get this all cleaned up now whilst there's not, out, not a lot else to do really. Lovely stuff. So, so far today they are putting the concrete floor in for the shed. I don't think they're going to get finished today. I think they're just kind of making the preparation stuff for the big pour tomorrow. Uh, so that will be very interesting to see how that goes. Um, we probably won't go and check on them today because like I say, they're just putting like, the finishing touches to the metal working for the concrete pour. Uh, we're going to have a look at that tomorrow though to see what they're doing. Uh, interested to see how that goes and we'll see how quickly we get it poured there. They are uh, an incredibly efficient little outfit when we get going. So that would be great to see. I hope that continues. But yeah, once that's in, then all they need to do really is put the doors and the uh, roof panels on and then we're good to go. So we could have a fully operational shed and shed probably very soon actually, which is ideal for what we need because. Uh, Oh well, yeah, I need to fill the rest of those sheds with bales that I've touched on, so that'll be quite nice to get that out of the way. Right, we'll just... I think we'll just get that pile built on the floor. Looks like we're pretty full at the moment. Without hitting my own tires, of course, that would be the best way to go about it. That's lovely. Excellent stuff. So we will go and take this away to uh, to tip this. We're going to drive back down the way we came. Uh, I think we'll like say we'll tip into that small little paddock anyway. Uh, but yeah, that's good. Let's go and see what we can do, shall we? Now there's likely going to be one more load of this, so uh, we will take this one down. Um, come back. We'll get the next load loaded up. And then you, we uh, will bring you along for the ride there where we can see where we're going and also going to have a look at the combine as well. So uh, we'll get this first load done and we'll come back and catch you in a little while. Okay folks, load number two. We are out here. There's actually not a great deal left in there now to be all honest with you. Uh, so we'll probably tidy that one up later on this afternoon. Uh, but for now we're going to take this load over and we're going to have a bit of a play with the combine as well. See if we can get that started up. We've cranked up there. Dad's been working on it hard so he says it's in good nick. Right, so everything's kind of working over. But uh, yeah, we just need to kind of 
pull it out and just let it run over and I just want to see it for myself really more than anything else. Uh, well, I mean, when is it not a good idea to always play it with a combine, I would say. Um, but anyway, we've put one load down now already. This is quite a heavy trailer load we're pulling here. The tractor's just kind of grinding up through the, the transmission. Um, but yeah, nice. The fortune of the fields are still nice and dry, so we can get out there without any issues. But yeah, it's uh, a little bit more in that shed than maybe I thought, actually. This is going to be what? The second load here. It's going to be about 20, 22, 23 tons. It's pretty heavy. Uh, 22, 23 tons across both trailer loads, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's good. We need to get this uh, need to get this put into the field anyway, and then we'll be spreading this and then plowing it in um, come autumn. There. Uh, probably onto one of the spring wheat fields, I think. But uh, we'll get around to that when it's all good and ready. There we go. And for another, it's a nice another little job ticked off the list that we don't need to worry about anymore and we can crack on with uh, well getting ready with our harvest preparations after this I think that's the last thing I needed to do before we uh, looked into harvesting the, uh, the spring crops so we're good in that respect we have some standing maize here that we need to think about at some point um, I don't quite know what I'm going to do with that at the moment we shall see Back into here, it's a little tight. A little too tight there. Huh? We're gonna get a little bit wider, see if we can swing in for it. There we go. So you can see there is load number one, and all we're gonna do is just um, tip onto the back of that load. Uh, and then that we'll keep that going down the field a little bit here. This field, like I say, has got a cover crop in, so it doesn't matter if, we're, if we trample over it too much. It's a fairly uh, kind of resilient crop anyway, so it will come through. And it's just like a nitrogen fixation, really, uh, with the aim of capturing a little bit of extra nitrogen, putting it back into the soil uh, that we can direct drill straight over the top of. But up goes the trailer. As you can see, this is kind of an old um, tipper lorry conversion, really. So it's a tipper lorry axle, tipper lorry body, uh, just converted to be connected onto the uh, onto a tractor. Uh, it works very well for us. It's a good hauling to hauling trailer. It has air brakes on it as well, um, as do most of the modern trailers. But at the time that when we got this one, that was kind of like a, more of a rarity. I think would be fair to say. And there's load number two in the books. So what I think we'll do, we'll just park the tractor in the gateway here for now. Well, we'll come back and get this to obviously drive back up to the main yard in a second. That's perfect. And around the corner we go, we're just going to pop into the main yard here. And in here is our combine. So we've got a combine header, uh, and then we have the beast itself. Now I think we might not be able to get the combine out per se uh, without moving the header. So we'll leave it in, but what we will do is we'll just jump in and give it a good start up, get it cranked over there, uh, and see how it performs. It's been a while since I was in this cab, let me tell you. Good lord. Uh, so it should start on the first, uh, first attempt. Let's see what it does. Oh, and it does. Love it. I'm just going to pull it back away from the wall a little bit. Oh, that was excellent. And we'll just jump out again. And there it goes. The combine is breathing and living. Like I say, this is an, this is an old girl here. We... Oh, I think... I mean, we got this when it was... Uh, well, it's 20, uh, just under 20 years old, I think. So, uh, and we've had it for about six years, I think it is all in, and it's still doing us a wonderful job. Um, so yeah, we're looking at mid 20s. It would still keep going. We look after it, so it's still going to serve for the amount of uh, cereal crops that we do. It's more than adequate for what we need. We don't need to think about upgrading or anything like that, and it'll just keep working through until we say stop, which is fantastic. Uh, the secret is to always make sure you look after them and keep them going, and um, yeah, that's what we aim to do. 
Headers in good nick, header trailers in good nick, there's no ru rust or corrosion anywhere on either machine. Apart from that little bit you could just see up by the um, grain tank there. But yeah, otherwise bodywork is good, mechanically it's all sound as well. It creaks, it groans like all older machines do, but it still works, so you can't really complain with it too much. Uh, and yeah, f we, can, we can average about 50 acres a day really, give or take, if it's all going well for us with this machine. Which is not a lot by modern comparisons at all, but um, you know, if the gr if the ground's there ahead of us and we can get going and we don't get any interruptions and with good dry crops, we can get through about 50. Um, but that's more than enough for what we need to do here. Uh, so yeah, nice to see it's all ticking over. I'm looking forward to getting into that into the, uh, into the meat of our crops very shortly. Uh, and yeah, it won't be too long at all. I'm just going to put it forward a bit, get away from that wall there. Perfect, Dad's done a good job in getting that all worked over, so we'll just switch it off for now. Uh, but yeah, it's all fit as a fiddle, raring to go. Uh, we'll probably come up and take the, once as soon as we know which field we can go into first, we'll take the header trailer out and probably take that up to our yard if that's the case. Uh, and then we can kind of uh, maneuver the combine out of here a little bit. Get that shot. And that's perfect. We need to come and get the new Holland back from us uh, from here at some point soon. Uh, we left that here from when we were spraying, but we'll do that at a later date. We can get around to that. It's no problem at all. But for now, we're going to jump back into the Massey. We're going to take this back into the main yard so we'll get that last load cleaned up and then we'll also um, we'll also give the, the pressure washer is up there as well. So we'll give us a good steam clean uh, and that way we know that we can, uh, we're good to go moving forward. Um, and it's in good clean quality for us to cart grain with this trailer. But for now, like I say, we're going to just take this back up. We'll get this uh, muck shift finished and uh, it's another job off the list. Which is great news. So we will leave us here. Thank you ever so much for watching. It is another short one. I do apologize. But for now, we just uh, there isn't a lot else we can get cracking with at the moment. Um, so it, we will be on the cusp of harvest very soon. And then we're going to flow straight into some more um, hay and silage. So lots to do there. We'll keep, uh, we'll keep going. And uh, we will catch up with you in the next one. So until then, thank you ever so much for watching. I do hope you have enjoyed. If you have, please do hit that like button, and if you have yet to subscribe to Simulation for the Nation, who very kindly hosts this channel, please do smash that subscribe button as well, and we shall see you in the next one. I have been Will, thank you ever so much for watching, do stay safe, enjoy what you're doing as always, but most importantly, happy farming.